will see how exactly the numbers are going to be represented in the system. We already dealt with the basic model and the basic model of a stored computer also which is given by the Turing model or a von Neumann model. Once the entire system is ready, we have to understand how exactly the numbers are going to be stored. Rather than speaking it as a number, let me be more specific as data. Let us see how the data is going to be represented in the system. Basically when I say a data, a data can be of different type. A data can be of type integer. A data can be of type fractional. When I say integer, it's a complete number. When I say fractional values, it will have a decimal point. Basically, these are the two types of data which we have been using in our mathematics also. Apart from these two types of data, we have some more additional type of data like characters and strings. When a data for any question is given as a single character, for example, if I ask you to specify the wing of your building, is it A wing or B wing or C wing or D wing, something of that sort. So in that case, the input is going to be only a single character. If I ask you to enter your grade, your grade will be A, B, C, D, E, F, G, O or P, something of that sort. So here the input seems to be only a single character which means that my input is now going to be called as a character input. Not just that for every answer you will have to have a character input itself. You can have even a string input. For example, if I ask you to enter your name, your name will not be a single character, your name will be a set of characters. When I ask you to enter your college name, your college name will not be a single character, it will be a set of characters. When I say set of characters, that will be a string type of value. So basically, we can have a character input or a string input or an integer input or a fractional input. So how these inputs are going to be represented in the system? That entire stuff will be stated in this particular bit called as introduction to number system. We will not be more specific, we will not deal with the character and string inputs right now as we will be discussing again these in the later uh, chapters of our syllabus. We will just go through the basic integer values and fraction values. So basically what are the various numbers which we are going to use? So basically we can have numbers represented as base n. Now the input always goes as base 10 which can be represented in base 2 that is binary format and the system will always access the numbers not as the input which you enter but as the binary values. Suppose if I enter a value as a 12, don't expect the system to access it as 12. So when you type 1 and 2 from the keyboard you might see that particular input appearing as 1 and 2 on the keyboard. But it is not exactly 1 and 2. It is only the values as 1, 1, 0, 0. That is the equivalent of 12 in binary value. So how do I get this particular values? How do I get this particular number system? Do we have only binary? No. We have other systems called as octal which is to the base 8 and hexadecimal which is to the base 16. So question comes, how this particular binary values or octal values or hexadecimal values will be saved? When I say binary value, a binary value will contain only two digits that is 1 and 0. Any number which is said in decimal will be always represented using digits from 0 to 9. So we have digits from 0 to 9. These digits are going to be used for forming or getting the number or getting the input. But the system will convert this entire set of bits into 1 and zeros. And how, how this particular octal is going to be represented? Octal will have numbers called as 0 to 7. So in an octal number system, we are going to represent numbers from 0 to 7. There is nothing as such called as 8 or 9 which exists in octal. All those will be represented again using the basic digits called as 0 to 7. Now, how do I get to these numbers? That depends upon the base. If the base is 2, it says you have to have 
two unique digits. If the base is octal, that is eight, it means that you have eight unique digits to form the number. So I have eight unique digits, zero to seven. So when I have base 16, it means that I need to have 16 unique digits to form the number. How do I get the values? So let me start writing the numbers from zero to nine. Now suppose if I use one zero as the next value, then one zero is combination of these values. So hence what I'll do is I'll represent this with alphabets A, B and so on till F. So when you count the number of digits in this including the alphabets, it counts as 16 unique bits. So a binary will always use 0 and 1, an octal will always use 0 and 7 and hexadecimal will use 0 to 9 and then A to F. So basically we use these as the combination of digits to represent a specific numbers. Now, to be more specific with this particular chapter, we will not go with octal and hexadecimal right now. We will only go with this particular binary system. So in this, I am supposed to study how a decimal number is going to be converted to binary and how a binary number is going to be converted back to decimal. Right? Now, let us take up a simple example of binary value. Suppose if I have a decimal number as say 25 to the base 10. Now, what this will be equivalent to in our binary value? How do I get this particular binary value of this particular decimal number? For that, we have to do this particular mathematical task. Remember this particular mathematical task carefully. Now, observe this. Take the given decimal number. And what you do is, you start dividing it by 2. You start dividing it by 2. So here, I will have this particular number as say 2. So 2 to the base 2 will be divided by 25. Put a line at this place. Now divide this 25 by 2 to its nearest value. So I will say 2 12s are what? 24. Do this particular mathematical operation with a separate number on your own after this particular entire part. I will say 2 12s are 24. This is my quotient. What is the remainder which is left? So I will have the remainder as 1 now. Because 25 minus 24 is 1. So I will put that remainder and put the quotient. When you divide, you have to get a quotient and the remainder. Now, check the quotient. Is this quotient less than 2? If true, stop this particular division operation. If not, continue this particular division operation. So here, 12 is not greater than 2, hence I will divide this particular number once again. So 2, what I will do? 2, 6 are 12. What is the remainder value? 0. 2, 6 are 12, remainder is 0. So now what I am supposed to do? So this I am supposed to check. Is this less than 2? No. No in the means I have to continue this particular division operation one more time. 2, 3 is a 6. What is the remainder value? 0. 6 minus 6 is 0. Put the remainder. Now 3, is it more than 2? Yes. If S, yes, then continuous particular division operation. 2, 1 is a 2. What is the remainder? 1. Because 3 minus 2 is 1. So I will stop this particular operation at this place because I got a quotient which is less than 2. Right? So let us take a quick revise. How do I do this? So 25 has to be divided by 2 continuously till I got a quotient less than 2. So 2 12 is a 24, remainder is 1. 2 6 is a 12, remainder is 0. 2 3 is a 6, remainder is 0. 2 1 is a 2, remainder is 1. Stop this particular division operation because you got a quotient less than 1. Now, you have to collect all these numbers in the reverse order from the last quotient till the first remainder. Remember, from the last quotient till the first remainder. What is the last quotient? I will write this particular value. 1, 1, 0, 0, 1. Now this is a binary of this particular 25. Binary of this particular 25. Right? So, I have converted the given number into binary. But probably in our programming languages, the numbers are not represented just with the binary values. The numbers are represented with some additional zeros either in a byte format or in a two byte format. Let us see what this particular byte or two byte format is. 
So byte format is nothing but a set of binary numbers represented with 8 binary bits. Remember a byte is always 8 binary bits, 0 or 1 they are called as bits. Right? So I have these bits. So how many numbers, how many bits have we used to represent 25? Let's count these number of bits. Count with me. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So 25 is how many bits? 5 bits. So I have said 25 using 5 binary bits. Now if I ask you to put this in a byte format, a byte format will take up how many bits? 8 binary bits. So I had to represent this number using now 8 bits format so that it can be represented as 1 byte. So 8 bits. So now I have 5 bits. I am falling short of how many bits? 3 bits. And those 3 bits will be always zeros which should be placed on the left hand side of the binary. Remember on the left hand side of the binary hence I will say 0 0 0 1 1 0 0 1. Now ultimately both are one and same. We don't have any difference. This also represents 25. This also represents 25. But the only thing is that this is my binary value. And this is binary in byte format. Binary in byte format. So now if I ask you to do this particular operation in a 2 byte format. 2 byte represents. 16 bits because 1 byte is 8 bits, 2 byte is 16 bits. So now I have to add up additional 8 zeros with this particular binary value. So let me put additional 8 zeros. Now what I'll do is I'll make a group of 4 so that a set of 4 groups will say that it is 16 bits. I have 8 zeros, then the next set of zeros are triple zero 001 and then 1001. Now this is still same, but this represents what? A number in a 2 byte format. This is my number in a 2 byte format. So, a number in a 2 byte format is with 16 bits representation. So, you have to understand how this particular number is converted into binary, right? So, this is with integer values. What if, if I am supposed to do with fraction values? How do I represent fraction values? Let's check this. Now, suppose if I take up a value as a 5.15 this is my decimal value which is a fraction point uh, I want to convert this into binary value how to get this particular 5.15 to its value now this will have some integer part and this will have some fractional part so let's convert the integer part separately and the fractional part separately so the integer part is what 5 we have already said this particular operation. Let's try it one more time. So I'll say divide by 2. 2, 2 is a 4. Remainder is what? 1. Since it is not less than, it is equal. Hence, I can still convert this particular operation. 2, 1 is a 2. Remainder is 0. So I'll say stop this particular operation and put the binary. The binary is what? 1, 0, 1 to the base 2. This is for what? 5. Now, Let's take up the fractional part separately. I'll say 0 0.15. What you do is you multiply this with the 2 again. 0 0.15 to 2. So here for integer part we should continuously divide by 2. For as for fractional part you should say that it should be represented in binary by multiplying it by 2. When I multiply the values I'll get a number. 0 0.15 is what? 0 0.30. Right. Now 0 0.30 has got again some integer part and fractional part. Collect this integer part as a digit and the fractional part as a binary value for the next operation. So uh, sorry, fractional part as a decimal value for the next operation 0 0.30 into 2. When you multiply 0 0.30 into 2, again what do you get? 0 0.60, right? 0 0.60 is again very much valid. So when I say 0 0.60, it has got integer part as what? 0. Collect this integer part. What is the fractional part? 0 0.60. So take this 0 0.60 multiplied by 2. What I will do? 1.20. Now when I say 1.20, what is the integer part? 1. Collect this 1. What is the fractional part? 0 0.20. Take always the fractional part for the next operation. Next multiplication operation and the integer part for 
the binary value, the fraction part for multiplication and integer part for the binary value. So integer part is 1, 0 0.20 into 2, what is that? 0 0.40. Now when I say 0 0.40, 0 is my value, whereas 0 0.40, so I'll say 0 0.40 into 2 is 0 0.80. If I say 0 0.80, 0 0.80 into 2 is 1.60. Now, when I say 1.60, so I'll say 1 as my value. Here, 0 was the value and 0 0.60 into 2 is 1.20. Again, this is 1. Now, don't you feel that these numbers will be recurring? Because 1.20, 0 0.20 into 2 is 0 0.40. 0 0.40 into 8 is? Uh, 0.40 into 2 is 0 0.80, 0 0.80 into 2 is 1.60, so again the numbers keep on recurring. So it will be 1001, 1001, 1001 and so on. You might write as many bits as possible to represent the number to its closest value. But generally what we do is we take up somewhere around 5 to 6 digits so that it can be approximated to the nearest value. Now, how this particular approximation is done, how many bits am I supposed to consider, how this part which is there in fractional part, will it represent the complete number, will it represent the close value to the number, it is all beyond the current scope of syllabus, but definitely this is a part of computer organization and architecture. There are some standards which govern how the number has to be represented, we call them as IEEE standards, right. So here. Let me write the binary value. So 0 0.15 is 00. I'll say 0 0.00. Collect all the binary words in this fashion. 00, 1, 00, 1. You can take up as many numbers as possible. This is my binary value. So 5 is 101 plus 0 0.15 equals to 5.15. Similar in the binary value 101. Point. 101.00 is added with this value. So, it's a 0 0.001001. We can add up any number of values and this is binary. So, this is how we convert a fractional value into the binary value 5 plus 0.15 is 5.15, right? So, quick recap of the entire system. We have started with the basic number system, binary, octal and hexadecimal. I have shown you one conversion of decimal to binary with the integer number and with the fraction value. In an integer number, what we do is we divide the number by 2. Every time when I divide, I'll get a quotient and I'll get a remainder. Keep on doing this particular process until you get a quotient less than 2. Once you get a quotient less than 2, collect all the values, all the binary values starting from the last quotient till the first remainder and group them and write the binary value. If they ask you to write in byte, represent that with 8 bits. Additional 0 should be always there on the left hand side of the binary value. And if it is in 2 byte, then you have to go for 16 bits. If it is a fraction value, continue the same process for integer number. Divided by 2, collect the binary and represent the binary. Take the fraction value, multiply it by 2. Keep on doing this particular operation. When you multiply by 2, every time you will get an integer value and a fraction value. Collect the integer as a binary value, fraction value for the next operation. Keep on doing this particular operation till you get zeros or till you get a recurring value. Or five operations maximum. Once you get these five operations, stop this particular five operations. If it is more than that, then well and good. You can do that particular task. If it is more than five bits, we don't have any objection, but obviously it is going to be very lengthy process. So stop the operation as soon as you get five bits. Once you get five bits, collect all the binary bits, merge the, the integer value and the fraction value, join them together to represent the number in fractional format. Now, uh, how many bits am I going to use? It is either going to be represented as 32 bits or 64 bits. But you can't just add up additional zeros like we did in integer values. And that will be some standards. We call them as IEEE 754 standards. IEEE 7541 standards. You can search this literature for IEEE 754 standards of single precision and double precision using 32 bit and 64 bits. This is all contents which are there in this particular part called as number system. Thank you.